Hello, today we are going to take a flight in the Just Flight BAE 146 to explore VOR navigation. And to do that, we've spawned an aircraft in US Air Colors at Charles M. Schultz Airfield, just north of the San Francisco Bay. So, if we can have a look at Little Nav Map, we've got several VOR stations dotted around the northern bay around Marin County so we're going to go and fly around these VORs and explore how the radios work in the aircraft along the way so first things first we need to get the airplane up and running so let's just run through doing that so we can go to the overhead panel and we can press batteries one and two to on we can go further overhead we go to lights and notices turn the nav to high int no smoking to auto and cabin emergency to arm so this i am not following the full checklist of things you would do i'm just doing the functional things that get the aircraft up and running so over here we can turn the yaw dampers on for one and two autopilot master on and avionics a and beta on anti-skid to on and the yellow and green lift spoilers to on back further down we go to the electric section in the second column we turn the bus tie AC and DC to auto so they're here and APU gen to on so that's down here you have to click it twice to make it go to the on position I am working to a printed list by the way um, if you go and search through my various videos, there is a startup list that has a link to the download for the printed checklist. So, um, pumps. We have to turn the left inner pump on. That's because it's the one that's used for the APU. For the APU itself, we turn the master switch on it to start over here. And then we wait for the power to become available. While we're waiting for that, we can go and set the flight deck emergency lights to armed. So they are down here. So we flick it to the center position, which is armed. And hopefully the APU will come up to speed very soon. Okay, so we should have power from the APU now, and we do. So then we can go back down here to the central console in the middle of the cockpit. We can turn the yaw dampers on. And then back in the cockpit, we can go and enable the oxygen system for both the pilot and the co-pilot. So I'm just going to skid myself across the cockpit and do that. Okay, back overhead again. We can set the centre tank transfer to auto in the fuel section. So that's over here. Centre tank transfer goes to auto. Ice protection over here. Ice detector to on, so that's the one under here. And then back on the main panel, we can click on this flip chart. And what this will do is configure the V-speeds. So that's done. Flight directors go to on. So we press F to do that and flick the switches on either side of the panel. Next is the nav. So if I come back down to here. Oh, sorry, no, I've, I've missed something out. So the nav radio, you switch it on and then turn the knob to on. You'd think I'd know how to do this by now, wouldn't you? On the front pedestal, comm radios both go to on. And now we can go program our flight. So you will notice if you've got the 146 that I have removed the um, the flight management computer. We do not need it. This flight is going to be all about the the uh, nav radios. So to get rid of the flight management computer, what you need to do is enable the tablets by clicking on the little label over there. And if you go and click on the aircraft section and open it up and click on the cog, 
you can remove the FMS navigation option, which is what I've done. Okay, so we don't need the tablets today either. So we're just going to focus on what we're doing. So, yeah, so we don't need to program an FMC, which, you know, absolves us of having to program anything in at all. So we, we are going to set the nav radios up, though, but we can do that once we're in the air. It's not of a massive concern. What we will do is give ourselves, we'll go and um, calibrate the altimeters. So press B and that calibrates the altimeters quickly. Alt altimeters. Press D and that will calibrate compasses if they need to be calibrated, but they're already done. Okay, so we can see we are at 100 feet above sea level, so we're going to we'll climb out for our for the purposes of our flight to 3,000 feet today. So we tune in 3,000 feet on the altimeter selector of the autopilot, and we arm it. If we don't arm it, if we were climbing out on vertical speed mode, it will fly straight through 3,000 feet. Okay, so how are we doing? Back overhead. We're going to get ready to get the aircraft ready to fly now. So we turn the seatbelt sign on. Back up overhead, we turn on the beacon lights, which informs the ground crews, basically, we're about to start the engines. Uh, if we were going to do a pushback, we would do it now. We don't need to push back. We're just parked out here on the tarmac today. Um, so overhead, getting ready to start the engines, we go and turn on all the fuel pumps. And now comes the start engine sequence for this. So start master goes to on. You turn the uh, start selector to the engine you want. You always start with number four on this aircraft. And then you click the start button. And if we go and look down here, you will see the N2 number. Uh, so N1 is climbing, so it's gone through 10. As soon as it goes through 10, you can come down here and you can enable engine number four's fuel flow via the starter switch there. So you will see it climb and you'll see the the um, gas temperature climbing. Okay, and when it's done, these lights will go out. So it's an automatic procedure. So they go, they've gone out, so we can go for the next engine. So engine number three, click on start, look back down. Wait for N1 to go through 10. And then come down here, flick the switch on engine number three. And you will see the TGT climb slowly. And we just repeat this process for the other two engines, basically. So we wait for these lights to go out. There we go. Start engine number two. Click start. <coughs> so we're waiting for N1 to come up. Depending on which accounts you read, you either wait for this one or you wait for this one. And some people will say 20. So what you're really waiting for is the electric starter is spinning up the engine and it will get to a certain speed and yeah so it gets to about that speed and it won't get any further so then you introduce fuel and it's kind of bootstrapping the engine and then it carries on past 20 but you can do it earlier it doesn't hurt it okay so we go and look overhead we wait for the lights to go out the final time there they go, engine number one, start engine number one. It's worth pointing out, I haven't even checked how much fuel we've got, so we have a quick look. We've got 70% fuel, but that's fine. Okay, so that's gone through 20 now, so we can start engine number one, or introduce fuel to it with the starter switch. And there we go, gas temperature's coming up. For the purposes of our flight today, we are just going to switch on the TMS system and leave on sync mode. Yeah, we're not going to do anything clever with it. So we're going to assume manual control of the engines, essentially. 
sync mode just means that the thrust will be equalized across them okay so that's all of the engine started so that can go back to off and the start master switch can go to off so back looking overhead again in the electric section gen 1 and gen 4 can now go to on so you click both of them twice the packs can now come on so that provides the air conditioning for the cabin engine air all of these can go to on further overhead we can turn the brake fans to auto and then hydraulics we can turn engine 2 and engine 3 pumps to on so these are the switches here we're nearly there so back overhead ice protection so these are the settings here there's engine anti-ice oh here we go ice protection so we just need to turn all of these to on the battery one goes into the middle and we are basically ready to taxi so we go and check overhead at the lights we want to go and turn the strobe lights on normally you wouldn't do that until we're on the runway but there's nobody around us so it's all fine uh, the beacons already on nav lights are on next thing to check is the flap positions so we're going to set the flaps for takeoff and release the parking brake and we need to release the chocks as well which to release the chocks actually we do need the tablet back to do that so we go to the aircraft controls and we can remove the chocks and get rid of the tablet again so let's see where we are on the airfield and we can get on with this VOR demonstration so we're going to be taking off runway 14 so we're going to go left turn right turn left turn okay so left turn Let's just check the volume levels of the aircraft so you can hear me over it. Yeah, it looks good. So the runway we, th we are taking off on is runway 14. So we can pre-arm the heading bug on the main nav instrument here to 140 degrees. So we're just going to do that while we're rolling out. 120, 130, 140 degrees is about there. So flaps are aligned. And we've got the strange bug with the Kodiak happening. I'm not quite sure what causes that because I've just got a factory set of textures with the Kodiak but it does that sometimes it's a, obviously a bug so let's have a look and see where we are on the map so we're rolling down to the end of runway 14 which is perfect so we are going to enable heading mode on the autopilot before we get there and we will go for vertical speed mode on the climb out. It's worth pointing out, this autopilot button is not a button, it's an indicator. You have to map a button for the autopilot. You know, to the master switch for the autopilot to switch it on and off. Here's the windsock and that's what we want to see. The wind is coming down the wrong way towards us. There is a bit of a side wind but it won't really affect us too much. Okay, I think we're pretty much ready to go. So as soon as we're in the air we'll get the autopilot on and then we can start talking about VOR navigation.
so gear up. And we will hit to vertical speed at this point and autopilot on. We could actually go for max continuous thrust on the engines. And watching the speed climb, we're doing we're going a bit steep for the aircraft, so we're going to drop down to a slightly shallower climb. Get some speed up. There we go. Flaps can go up. Vertical speed is recovering. There we go, and we're climbing out now. So we'll climb a little bit more. Thousand feet a minute will be fine for our purposes. Okay. Except it's got through 1500. Something you have to be aware of in the BAE 146 is the autopilot isn't necessarily quite as clever as the modern aircraft. But we're accelerating and we're climbing out. So we can get outside and it's very noisy out here. We can see we're climbing out. Okay. So let's have a look at the map. I'm just going to check the sound levels. You can hear me over it, can't you? Yes. Let's turn it down just a little bit. I'm going to turn it down as well in Windows so I can hear myself speak. Which should be good. Okay. So we're climbing out. Away from... Uh, Charles M. Schultz. Okay, let's have a talk now while we're flying out. Just, just have a look at the map, see what direction we're going. So we're, let's go out to sea. We're doing 90 degree right turn. So let's go out at 230 degrees. Notice the aircraft is approaching 3,000, or it's just gone through 3,000 feet, so it's gone into altitude hold mode automatically. So let's climb up to 5,000. To do that, we will need to pull back, to give ourselves some pitch. So we're using the trim to do that. We're going to climb at 2,000 feet a minute. Gauge vertical speed mode. Okay, so now we are going out to sea, which is perfect. Gives us some time to, to talk things through. Okay, so you've got two nav radios in the aircraft. There's one here that has two frequencies you can tune in, and you can flick between them. So you just press the button here, so you can tune... Whichever one this um, lever points towards, this switch points towards, is the one you are tuning, yeah? So you can change them independently. The top one is the active one, but you can swap the frequencies with the button here. So the NAV1 radio has two frequencies. The NAV2 radio over the other side only has one frequency, okay? It's worth pointing out as well, in order to use the nav radios in combination with the autopilot, this needs to be on nav, not on our nav. And again, the instruments will only reflect the nav radios if this is on nav. Okay? If you're using the flight management computers, you would need to switch this to our nav for it to follow the route that you've programmed in. But we don't have them, so we leave it on nav today. We're just over speeding, so we go to the TMS, set it to sync mode, and we pull the engines back. The reason we're speeding is because we've got to 5,000 feet already. There we go. <coughs> okay. So we've talked about we've got a NAV1 radio and a NAV2 radio. So what do they do? If I go and tune one into a beacon, and we're going to use this beacon here to illustrate it, We've got the PYE VOR station. That is a, a code, it means point raise. Yeah, so it's an acronym then, if you want to call it that. 
for a point raise and it has a frequency of 113.70 which you can see illustrated here so if we tune the nav radio into 113.70 go the other way because it's closer to get to 0.7 by counting down than up as soon as we've done that this is the active frequency remember you saw this instrument move we are now seeing the distance to the um, the beacon and because of that it can work out our ground speed as well. But you're also seeing this big yellow arrow. So this obviously is reflecting the direction we are going. But what does the big yellow arrow represent? It's the course. And it's up here. So at the moment it's pointing north. Of course we're not going north. We're going southwest. Which you can see is represented by 230 degrees. Yeah, so our track is 230 degrees. What if we wanted to go directly to PYE? If we spin the course round, you'll notice the yellow line has lined up when we get it to a certain place. But notice there is a little white arrow on the opposite side of the yellow arrow. That means from the VOR station. So at the moment we tuned that in, we were about 300 degrees from the VOR station, and we can check that. So if we measure a distance here, whoops, measure from point raise. So at the point we did it, we were probably back there, look, that was about 300 degrees. Obviously we're travelling, so it's too late now. Yeah? If we spin this all the way round you will notice the, the white arrow has flicked over and is now on the same side as the yellow arrow. And that means the direction to the VOR beacon. So if we line it up, gone too far, if I turn it back a bit. So that means that where, from where we are now, it is 90 degrees to the VOR. So let's measure from about there. Measure distance. And this obviously we had moved but 90 degrees to the VOR yeah so you get the idea so you can use the VOR radio to know what direction to go to get to the VOR station which is the most simple way of doing it so if we were to um, turn the course so it's straight towards the VOR and we go and move our heading to the same angle so I'm going to spin the heading bug around to the same direction that we were going. Or oh, sorry, the same direction that the VOR station was from us at that time. Now you'll notice the middle is moving away. So by the time we get there, we will no longer be at the same angle to the VOR. So I'll illustrate how you can fix that in a moment. So you can see we are turning back towards... the VOR station. So the aircraft is turning as best it can on the autopilot. I don't think in the BAE we can change the rate of turn. No, we can't. It's fixed. In the 146 you can't change the rate of turn. In the MD-82 and the 737 you can. So what you will see here, it would have helped if we were a bit further away actually. So by the time we get to the 90 degree line, or if you think about it, 270 degrees from the VOR, so let's draw that in, measure distance, point raise, we want the 270 degree line, which was way over there. So when we did it, it would have been that angle. But now, this is telling us we're flying the angle we wanted to go, but by the time we got there, we're, wait we're to the right of the line. We're to the right of the line. We're massively to the right of the line. So let's see what happens if we then turn through 60 degrees. I'm hoping this is going to be in time, so you can see this happen. So we're turning. I'm just going to slow down a little bit. We're going a bit too fast to, to illustrate some of this stuff. So we're turning it. It's going to be perfect. 
So now we are heading towards a heading of 30 degrees or, or thereabouts. So let's just turn that to 30. So the important thing here is watch what happens to this line. So relative to us, the little aeroplane, the 90 degree line into the VOR is there. Yeah? So that's the same angle offset between those two as us hitting here. Yeah, if we draw a line here. If you think about when we get to there, that's that same angle offset that you're seeing here. So we would need to turn to 90. But when do we do it? If we weren't looking at this map, how do we know? This will start to sweep in when we get to the line. We can see... Or we will see... Here it comes, look. So if we were to start turning right now, we're probably too late. Whoops. Yeah, so we're a little bit too late, so we'll go to the other side of the line. Obviously I've not drawn that line in quite the right place. But you get the idea of what we're illustrating here. And if we wanted to go directly towards the VOR, we just change the course. So we line this back up, which tells us exactly the direction to go. We'll go even go a bit further the other way, because by the time we get there it would be too late. And we just align the heading with the aligned course. And we're flying directly at the beacon. Okay? And then to change to another VOR, we just tune a different frequency. So 116.20, for example. But how about we want to carry on flying this route? Let's see what happens as we fly over the top. What will the aeroplane do? What do you think it's going to do? Watch the white arrow. So we are over the top of the VOR. This is fading off to one side because it's going down the side of us. We'll keep an eye on it. Watch the white arrow. One mile to go. We, remember, we're not directly overhead. We're off to one side. 0.7 miles. The arrow has changed sides. We are now flying away from the VOR. And this number is going to start increasing. 0.9, one mile away, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, as you can see, look, we flew down the side of it. So maybe we want to fly to SAU now. So rather than leave this one alone, what we could do, or rather, rather than meddle with this radio, we can actually tune this one on, on Nav Radio 2, so 116.20. So we'll change Nav Radio 2 to 116.20. And you can see this instrument will come alive. Oh, 116.20, sorry. And is it going to come alive? It's interesting. Why hasn't it come alive? Maybe because there's hills in the way. Yeah, I bet the hill is in the way. At the end of the headland. So this reinforces a really good point about nav radios, is they are based on line of sight. So if we, on purpose, change our heading to go back out towards the ocean, let me get some more time to think about this. So, from where we are, we would like to go, say, about 170 degrees would be perfect for our purposes. So let's make sure that we've got the heading bug on 170. So it's about there. I'm just moving this small triangle on, on the compass to 170. So what we're going to do is fly past to see if we can get us to line up. So let's come over here and look at this other instrument. And let's tune the course 
and say what about if we wanted the course to be uh, we'll do a measurement just to get an angle 67 degrees into the SAU VOR at 116.20 so we've got 116.20 and we want to tune the course to be 67 degrees yeah so we're going to spin this round now, can we see it yet or should we be able to see it yet Something else that's worth checking is the range of the VOR, because they're not all as powerful as each other. So this is a Sausalito VOR, and its range is 60 miles. But I think at the moment we're just out of line of sight of it. So we should be able to see it soon. Just to make sure I haven't got a radio problem in the aeroplane, and again this is a good reason for having two nav radios. Let's tune it in on nav, nav 1 to, oh, let me get rid of the, um, just detuned the comm radio so I don't hear the radio. So 11620, we'll tune it in over here. So we'll do what we talked about. We'll tune it in on the pre-frequency, 116, oops, let me, 116, We'll swap that over and we'll tune this to use the active frequency and we'll tune this as it picked it up it has hasn't it and that one hasn't so I think I may have a problem with the nav 2 radio let's just see if that's yeah it's not gonna wake up is it interesting okay so the nav1 radio, I'll explain what split does in a moment. We're going to go 116.20 and we'll put another line on the map, measure distance. We want to fly the 16 degree line into this VOR. Okay, so we can change our course to 16. So you, rather than finding out the exact direction of the VOR to you, you can choose the angle you want to go towards the VOR and then it's just your, a case of your problem to turn the heading. So I'm going to turn towards that direction. So this means you can fly specific vectors into VORs. So we're turning. Now if I've got this right we won't be on the line and you'll be able to see the offset on, on this marker. This little, the yellow lines here are called a, a course deviation indicator or CDI. You might have seen that at the bottom of the G1000 radio stack, there's a CDI button. So this idea of having an arrow with a line where the, mid, the, the middle of the, the arrow moves from one side to the other is the course deviation indicator. So it's telling you if you are deviating from the course. So yeah, we are going to probably cross over it. So we'll be off to the right. Unless we just by pure fluke line it up. Let's see what's happening. Well, I think we're probably going to line it up by pure fluke. It's going to be off to the right ever so slightly. Or we might just be lucky. But essentially you can chase the line. So if it is off to one side. Yeah, we've done that perfectly. Which wasn't a very good demonstration because I can't now show you what happens so if we go off to one side say if we carry on steer slightly to one side you will see the line move to the other side meaning we are off to the right yeah, there it goes look it's moving and what that means is relative to the angle we wanted to go into it we're off to one side so we can tune this back in the lines I've drawn on the map aren't very accurate. So we can crisscross back over it. We're only four miles away. So we may not even have time to get back. It's 
interesting that we couldn't pick up anything on Nav 2. I wonder if we can pick up other stations on Nav 2. So let's go and fly over to this next one. 112.10. Let's try changing it then. 112. Point one zero. Nope, it seems to be broken. Unless I'm missing something in the cockpit. Both of these switches are on nav. But that's not lighting up. Okay, we'll just we'll just concentrate on using this one then. Okay, so 112.10, so we can tune the second frequency here to 112.10, oops. And then we can switch that to become the active frequency. So if we want to fly directly towards that VOR station, because you can see we're not flying towards it, but say if we were looking at our flight plan here, we actually would like to have the three degree line to this VOR. So we've got it tuned in, we just need to choose three degrees here. And this will hopefully illustrate, yeah, we are slightly off to the left of that three degree line. Yeah, so rather than us draw scribbly lines everywhere, we're slightly off to the left. So all we have to do to get on that three degree line to be following the track is change our course to intercept it. So we'll turn slightly just a few degrees to the right and we will cross over the line. So let's just go a bit more so you see it happen easily. So we are now flying across the path of the line. We're still to the left of the line. That's what this little diagram means, that the aeroplane is to the left of the line and it is to the left of the line. We're slowly coming back towards the line. Which you can see happening. And obviously when we get close to the middle of the line, we straighten up. Now, we don't have to do it ourselves. We can use VOR lock. Yes, yeah, there's a button on the autopilot, so rather than us fiddle around with the, the heading trying to do it ourselves, why don't we just press VOR lock and let the aeroplane do it? So the aeroplane is taking care of doing that. It's getting us on to the, the course towards the VOR that we wanted. So that's what VOR lock does. You choose the course to the tuned in VOR station and the aeroplane will intercept that line and get onto it for you rather than us play around with the heading. But it's good for you to know what it's doing. All it's doing exa is exactly what we were doing. It's lining up the center of the course deviation indicator. Okay, so what happens when you want to change to another station and you've only got one nav radio, as we appear to have today? That's where we can use the pre-frequency. So we can set this for the next one before we get there. 117.00. So we've got the switch here set to pre. We go to 117.00. And we know we want to come into it at 100 degrees. Yeah, so we can switch to heading hold mode. We can, before we do that, we'll move the heading bug to go the direction we're going. Yeah, so it's all lined up. Switch to heading hold mode. And now we are free to go and switch over the frequency of the, the nav radio to the next one. So we are going to switch frequencies. So this is now reflecting the next one and we want to go 100 degrees towards it. So we change the course to 100 degrees, as fast as we can. Uh, okay, and that tells us we're about to cross over the line, so we're too late doing it. 
but we can start doing that for the for the aeroplane or remember we can press VOR lock and it will just get on with it so let's see what the aeroplane does on VOR lock it should turn too far and come back in so it will fly that intercept course you can see it doing it here look so it's over the top of the line now so it's going to go off to the left of the line which you can see happening here because it's trying to get to the 100 degree track to that VOR station yeah the one at 117.00 so now it's made an intercept course, a gentle one, and it's straightening up. So it's just coming in at a very gradual angle back towards it. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at, the final thing today, it's going to be ILS, but before we get there, just, let's just do a recap of what we've talked about. We have talked about not only flying directly to or from a VOR by recognising that there's the little white arrow that means either to or from on the angle you're seeing on the course. We've also talked about flying a specific angle into a VOR. Yeah, so you might choose an angle that's not, that doesn't reflect where you are in the sky, so then you fly an intercept course. Okay, so you can see the aeroplane is gently banking left. It was very, very gentle, but it's straightening up onto the course. You can see it doing it here. It's like it's threading a needle, basically. So what we will do when we get to 11700 is leave it at a given angle that we want. So let's measure from the Concorde VOR and say, let's say we wanted to leave at the 35 degree radial from the VOR so they the angles from the VORs are called radials so what all we have to do we can leave it on the frequency we'll just change our course to 35 degrees when we leave and the VOR lock should hold on to that it, the VOR lock may switch off when we get over the top we'll see what happens so we're counting down with six and a bit miles out you will notice as well there is a second instrument here. So while this one shows you the um, the frequency, or you know, nav one, this one shows you it as well, but it will show both at the same time. And that really comes into play with the split mode. Split means, or well, when split is in the middle, it means the nav one instrument shows on this display. The nav two instrument shows on this display yeah if you switch split to nav one it means they will both show the nav one radio on the instruments if you switch to nav two it means they will both show the nav two frequency on the radios the autopilot when it's the split is in the middle the autopilot will use nav one if you set select nav one or nav two the autopilot will use the one you have selected yeah, so when you've got it on nav mode, or sorry, on VOR lock mode, I should say, it's going to go to the one that you have chosen. And if it's split, it's nav 1. Okay, so we're a mile away. Let's see what happens. Does it stay on VOR lock mode after we fly over the top? It's about to lose it. So we've just gone over. It stayed on VOR lock mode, but we're now flying from. So is it going to try and turn? Yes, it is. But we wanted to go 35 degrees, didn't we? So we'll go 35 degrees. We want to be on that 35 degree radial. So let's see what the plane does. Will it just turn to 35 or will it turn beyond 35 to intercept the... 35 degree radial so will it keep turning to come back this way and then turn right let's 
see what happens. Oh, I think the sim has just frozen. Yeah. <laughs> the sim chooses its moments, doesn't it, to freeze. It will wake back up. There we go. It's something to do with USB controllers, the freezing. I'm almost certain of it. So look, we asked for the 35 degree radial, it's gone beyond. So it's intercepting on VOR lock. So it's coming back towards that line and then it will turn right. Well, that's at least what we're hoping. It's doing it at a very sharp angle. Yeah, there it goes, look. So it's levelling out. It's flying towards the line on an intercept angle. And then it will start turning right again to get onto the 35 degree line from the VOR. So that was much more pronounced than when we just missed it. But it's doing the job. So you should see it's levelling out. Look, it's coming in to meet the course deviation indicator. OK. So we're going to go out a little way. We're going to tune the ILS in. So I'm going to leave this on heading hold mode. So we'll get the heading going the kind of direction we want it to go. So we'll put heading hold mode on with it going to the opposite, the reciprocal of the runway direction, which for our purposes today is 10 degrees magnetic. Would be perfect. So let's go and make sure that this is on 10 degrees on the heading marker the heading hold mode on the autopilot so we're flying directly away on the reciprocal of the runway direction and while we're flying in the opposite direction let's go and tune in the ILS frequency 108.50 so we tune in 108.50 and we've done this on the standby frequency so we need to swap it so now nav radio is representing the ILS. We also need to change the course to the runway direction. Now the runway direction it says here, or the ILS direction, is 185 degrees. So we spin this around to 185 degrees. Okay. So the yellow line there represents the runway direction, which is the exact opposite of the direction we're going. But we already knew that because we did it on purpose. So using heading hold mode, we'll just spin around to go the same direction as the runway. So we'll turn left to get there. I won't do it in one go because we were turning beyond 180 and it would confuse the plane and it would start turning right instead of left. So we're just leading it around the corner with the heading book. Okay, so we're now turning the plane back towards the direction of the runway. Yep, so we're turning and we're going to come back towards Buchanan Field. And we've got Nav Radio 1 tuned into the ILS frequency for that runway. So you can see, look, we're turning. So the course deviation indicator is saying we are to the left of the runway centre line which we are. If we were to draw a line on the map just for illustrative purposes that's on the centre line, you can see we are to the left of it. But we're turning towards it and we're going to be quite luckily on it by the look of it. So let's go and delete that distance measurement. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Remove that measurement. Remove this one as well. We just tidy the map up a little bit. Let's turn the AI aircraft off so we can see what's going on here. Okay, perfect. We're not on the line, which is what I wanted. But I am going to slow down now. We are 16 miles out. We are slowing down. We need to descend. So we will 
trim the aircraft for descent. Two thousand feet a minute. Got a long way to go, so it's not a big panic. So we can see we're coming in towards. the airfield and you can see we're off to the right if we go VOR lock the aircraft will correct itself and will turn right and put itself on the ILS I'm just looking I'm suspecting that the ILS at Buchanan Field doesn't have a glide slope without looking in detail, show information for the ILS. It's just a, a localizer. It doesn't have a glide slope. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, let's go and find somewhere else to land. So we are going to double back on purpose and we'll go into how long is the runway at Napa County. That's fine. Let's just make sure to see if they've got a glide slope. Show information for Napa County. That has a glide slope. Okay, so we'll tune it in. 111.30. So we'll tune, put this back on heading mode. We want to fly over this way. Yeah, so we're going to go I really want you to see the glide slope if you've not seen one before so we're flying along quite happily at 2,500 feet on altitude hold mode and heading mode and we're cutting across we're going to tune in 111.30 on the nav radio this won't affect our course because we're on heading hold mode. So, 11130. One, one, this, this serves me right for not planning things ahead enough. Okay, so then we switch that to be the active frequency. He says, famous last words. Okay, and then we know you need to turn this round on the course to match the runway direction or the, the ILS direction which is 7 degrees magnetic. So we change the course to 7 degrees. OK, so relative to the direction we are going, we need to turn almost back on ourselves to go towards the direction of the runway, which is correct, look. We need to fly over here and come back in. We'll just have a look in front of ourselves, because we're only at 2,500 feet, and I know there are hills around here. So I'm just being careful. We're going to be very close to those hills. That's fine, though. I think we're high enough. Right, so you can see we're 13 miles away. You can see on the map, we're coming back round. So we'll start slowly turning towards the runway direction. It'd be good actually if we had a run in though, because then I can illustrate what goes on with the ILS beam. So the thing I said we were missing was this. This is the glide slope. So this is really only showing you your position laterally across the ground, so sideways in relation to the VOR station. This one is the glide slope. This shows you your position vertically in the sky. So if you imagine this beam is being projected at a three degree angle, you can see it says GS three degrees. So that beam is at a three degree angle from the bottom of the runway out across the sky. So the glide slope marker will tell you if you are above or below that three degree marker or that three degree line through the sky. It will make much more sense once we're on it. So let's start turning towards the course we want to be going. So we'll turn to 270 now. Whoops. OK, 
Okay, so we're now flying it across here. And then we will start to turn in towards 7 degrees magnetic. We could use VOR lock to allow the aeroplane to do it itself. Should we let it have a go at it? See what happens. See, it's not going to do it. It cannot perform wonders. It's probably because it's beyond 90 degrees. So we'll turn it back off. And when we get a bit closer, I'll turn it in and see if I can get it to to do it. The VOR lock cannot perform wonders on older aircraft. It can't figure out the math solution, basically, to do the intercept. Let's do it, see if it'll do it now it's inside 90 degrees. No, it's still not going to have it. We're too far away from the angle. Okay, I'll fly this in manually because I'm more interested in showing you the course deviation indicator. So autopilot is off. Okay. Look at the mouse here so I can point things out. So we're just turning gently towards the runway direction. Holding two and a half thousand feet. Now you can see the the beam is coming in. So if we straighten up or oh, don't try not to turn too much. You can see also this line has come down. We are now in exactly the right place vertically. So we chase this by lowering the nose. And notice if we go too much, we went too steep. We went below the line. So we're below the point in the sky we should be. So if we pull the nose back up, we can climb back towards it. And then we can put the nose back down and chase it again. So we're basically chasing those needles. So we'll come off the engines now. So we are above where we need to be. So if we just lower the nose gently. I'm going to put the air brakes out. We're going far too fast. And the wheel's down. Now if we were to look up now, you will be hardly surprised to see there's the runway directly in front of us and we're heading straight for it. So that proves the point that if you can follow those lines and make the picture in your head of what's going on, you can land without being able to see the runway. Or at least you can get near the runway without being able to see it. So I'm just dropping the flaps as we come in, using the air brakes as well to get rid of some speed. We are now too high, you can see that illustrated. So if we go off to one side, for example, you can see the course deviation indicator is going to move. If we dive for the floor, you'll see the line come back up, because we are above that imaginary line. And now we're coming back down onto it, yeah? So I'm obviously I'm weaving around all over the place, so you get to see the markers move. Obviously, once you have visuals on the runway, you can line up on it yourself. 500. So we're going for full flaps. Keeping an eye on the airspeed. Spoilers. You can see the lift spoilers on the 146 are enormous. Okay, 
retract the spoilers, retract the flaps, and use the wheel brakes. So hopefully, seeing lots of these things being done one after another shows that it's a toolkit. You use the VOR radios to suit yourself. I'm still not sure why <laughs> the uh, nav radio number two didn't work, but it shows you can still manage with one because you have a standby frequency, so you can be tuning one frequency in while using another, and you can use in concert with that the heading hold mode. So you can be mani manipulating the radios while also thinking about where you are and I guess the takeaway of using the VOR radios and you know flying into the beacons and away from the beacons is you don't have to fly directly to and from them from where you are you could follow a particular angle into them and a particular angle out of them and that's how the corridors tend to be arranged in the sky that you'll have heard about the corridors tend to be particular angle angles to and from particular beacons Okay, let's go and park this plane up. I'm not going to do the full shutdown sequence because nobody wants to watch that. But hopefully this video was helpful in just seeing things being done and seeing the symbology change. That's really the biggest takeaway, is understanding what the lines mean. You know, when you're flying to or from a beacon and if you're to the left or the right of the track that is the course, illustrate is the direction of the arrow and the course is not the same as your heading. Your heading is the direction you're going, the course is the direction you wish you were going. Or you intend to be going, I should say. There's a better way of saying it. So heading is the way you are going, course is the way you want to go. Okay, wheel brakes on. Hopefully that was useful. We're a bit bigger than the other planes, aren't we? <laughs> and that was the BAE 146 and VOR navigation in the BAE 146. So I'll see you again soon. <laughs>